People ask me all the time about seller financing and we talk about seller financing all the time on my channel because it's one of my favorite ways to buy properties and we buy recently a lot of multi-families from small multi-families from small mom and pops and they seller finance so a lot of people come to my channel to learn about seller financing and Jackson hi Jackson sent me a really great question about the seller financing process and like what the heck do you do once you get the seller to agree to your seller financing terms my name is April Crosley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a real estate investor in Berks County, Pennsylvania. We flip houses here, buy small multifamily properties, and we also do a little bit of private lending. And today we're going to talk about how, what the seller financing process looks like. Okay. So Jackson sent me a question and asked, once you're done your due diligence, so your due diligence is like you walk the property, you know what repairs it needs, you know, this is the property I want and you talk to the seller about financing it and you finally get them to agree, which sometimes is a really long process. The last two seller financing deals that I got from small mom and pop landlords took me six months to hash out exactly what the seller financing terms would look like because it took me that long to educate the seller, but it's worth it because there's some of the best deals that you're gonna get are gonna be seller financed ones from small mom and pop landlords. So hang in there and have some patience. You need to be able to explain to them what the seller financing process looks like because they want to know that you know what you're doing because it makes them feel comfortable. If you're talking to them and they're like, okay, once I agree to this, then what happens? And you're like, oh, bleh, oh, bleh, oh, bleh, I don't know. They're, they're not going to feel real comfortable about seller financing their building for you because they're becoming the mortgage company. The mortgage company wants to lend to someone they feel comfortable with okay so these are the steps this is what the process looks like after you're done due diligence after the property's under contract so just like a flip when you agree on seller financing terms you're going to send the contract to the seller they're going to sign it with the seller financing terms and they're going to send the contract back to you and then this is what you're going to do okay so this is how i do it in pennsylvania every state's going to be a little bit different depending on what your closing process looks like you're gonna send the contract to the title company. I always tell my sellers, even though you're becoming the mortgage company and your seller financing, the property is closed with a title company or a closing attorney. Sellers sometimes think what happens is, say they agree to, let's use the eight unit we were talking about in a previous video. The seller thinks if I'm seller financing $108,000 for you, I'm giving you $108,000. If you were a seller, would you feel comfortable just giving someone a check for $108,000? No, you wouldn't. And that's not how the process works at all. So you need to let the seller know everything happens with a title company or a closing attorney. Any funds that you give them that you put down, any money down, and any contracts are notarized via a title company or an attorney. So I tell them it's all done on the up and up just like if you were to normally buy or sell a house, okay? So send your contract to the title company. Then you need to contact an attorney to draw up a note and a mortgage. And we talk about notes and mortgages in previous videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can go back and watch all that stuff. A note lays out the terms. It's like me as the buyer, I'm making payments of 650 a month, to Mr. Seller at 6% for 30 years with a balloon in five years. The payment's gonna be on the 20th of every month and I'm gonna send it to this address or this bank account via wire. That's all laid out in the note. That's what the note says. It lays out all the terms. So it's basically our agreement with the seller. The mortgage is what gets recorded at the courthouse so that when they sell or finance for me, I can't, sell the building out from underneath them without paying them off. Meaning they're holding a loan of 108,000 for me. I'm making payments to them every month, but I can't sell that building to someone else without paying off their loan, okay? They're gonna ask you that, trust me, that question comes up all the time. So the mortgage is recorded. The mortgage is the lien on the property. It's a lien on the property. Contact an attorney, Whatever you do, it might cost you like 300 bucks or 500 bucks to have the note and mortgage drawn up. Don't 
print off paperwork from like some random website or like get paperwork from Staples. Have a professional attorney do it. I will usually draw it up via my attorney and then tell the seller they can have their attorney check it if they want their attorney to check it, okay? Things you need to give the attorney. You need to tell them the seller's name and the seller's address, the property address and the tax ID number. That's what specifically identifies the property for the attorney in the note mortgage. The buyer, meaning you, your name or your LLC's name and the address. This is all information the attorney is going to need for the note and mortgage. How much the seller is mortgaging, what the interest rate is and what your monthly payments are going to be and what the date of closing is going to be. Closing happens with the title company or with an attorney, depending what state you're in. Okay. So they need all this for the note and mortgage. So now that you've watched this video, when you email an attorney, you can have all this information laid out for them. It's going to make their life so much easier and draw up the note and mortgage so much faster. Then you're going to present this note and mortgage to your seller and they can have it checked by their attorney. All this gets signed and notarized at settlement. Okay. So once the seller says note and mortgage looks great, you're going to take that note and mortgage and you're going to send it to the title company so that they have it. They'll hold it until closing and then you can sign it at closing. Your seller doesn't even actually, they'll go to closing, but you sign a lot more paperwork than they do on a seller finance. So the other thing you need to do is reassure your private money lender that their name is going to be put on two insurance policies. One is the property insurance as what's called a loss payee. So say they sell or finance a building and the building burns down. Well, they have a mortgage on the building to you. You want to make sure that they get paid if the building burns down by the insurance company. So the seller on a seller finance is named as a loss payee on the insurance policy. They're also, they also get what's called a lender title policy. So quick explanation for those that don't know title insurance is like, say you own a building and a contractor puts on a roof for you and you don't pay the contractor. So they put a lien on the building saying you owe me $30,000. Okay. When you go to sell that building, the title company does a title search and that lien of $30,000 will show up. So in order for me, to, when I buy the building, that'll have to be paid off. They're ensuring that the title is clear and there's no liens on it. You want your lender named on the title policies or to have what's called a lender title policy so that if anything wonky shows up down the line, you know that they're insured. The title company did a title search. They made sure all liens were clear. And if the title company missed anything, you don't have to pay for it. Your lender doesn't have to pay for it. Your title company is the one that has to pay for it because they missed it in the title search. Okay. So they get named as a loss P in the property insurance and they get named as, um, a, they get their own lender or title policy on the property. So the title company, when you go to settlement, you set a date, you go there and they will notarize the note and they file the mortgage at the courthouse, usually the local courthouse. I've actually had title companies tell me to file it in like different states. And that's kind of weird. Like I just go back and tell them I don't do that. So whatever I need to pay you to file it, please file it. So just get clear on that with your title company or attorney. But I always make sure that they're filing the mortgage and they handle the deed transfer. So on a seller finance, I get this question all the time. The deed transfers, the seller's going to ask you that. They are not responsible for taxes anymore. The property is not in their name. It's now in your name as the buyer. They are strictly acting as the mortgage company. So the deed transfers. I don't like deals where the deed doesn't transfer. I've had sellers ask me, oh, I don't know if I want the deed to transfer until you pay me off. Then I'm like, no, the deed has to transfer. I want the deed in my name. They're protected as a loss payee, they're protected on the lender title policy and in the note mortgage side note, in case they ask, I always have my attorney put in the note, something called assignment of rents. So if I stop making mortgage payments to the lender, my rents go can automatically go to the lender. The lender can take my rents from the building if I stop making mortgage payments. Okay. So there's things the attorney can put in the note to protect the lender, but I always want the deed transferred. Okay. 
So your part, the very last thing you do, one, of course, celebrate, woo, because you got a deal on seller finance, which is amazing. Two, set up payments. I always have my bookkeeper set up my lender's payment. So say the lender's payment, lender slash seller, who's financing their payments are due on the 20th of every month. I have my bookkeeper set it up. I tell him payments are due on the 10th. I always want my payments to arrive early. When a seller's financing, you don't want them to be like wondering where, where is the payment? What's going on? Checking their mailbox feverishly. You want it to arrive early. You want them to be comfortable with you. So set up some kind of automatic payment, whether that's a check going out from your bank account or transfer to transfer from bank account to bank account, whatever the case may be, but send it early. And then send all your paperwork to your accountant. The accountant needs to know everything. If you don't have a professional accountant and you're buying real estate, you need to get one. The days of H&R Block and like doing your own accounting is over, that ended, okay? So all this paperwork, your note, your mortgage, the payments you're sending to the lender, all that information needs to go to your accountant so he can hash out everything at the end of the year because you're paying interest to this private money lender. So there's certain forms your accountant has to send them at the end of the year, okay? So that's everything you need to do when a seller finances a property so that you can explain it to them. You can watch this video over and over and explain it to them and they'll feel totally comfortable with you. Thank you guys for watching. You can find out more information by following us in our free group on Facebook, Coffee Talk Real Estate Investing. You can also follow us on Instagram at April Crosley, and you can email me any of your questions, april at lazygirlrei.com. Thank you.